Next up, James Swain is going to tell us about how to see the future. Okay, thanks. Uh, so I'm going to talk about the future visualizer, uh, and to do to kind of show you the motivation for why we need this thing, uh, I'm going to walk you through a quick uh, code example. So here, uh, this is the Mandelbrot set calculation. You've probably all seen this before. Uh, so I'll just give you a quick overview of what's going on here. Uh, so I'll start down here. So we've got two functions, right? First function, man range, takes a start row and an end row. Uh, for each pixel coordinate within those that that range of rows uh, will calculate if that pixel uh, would be in the Mandelbrot set. Uh, and so the way we do that, he that here is with the uh, end Mandelbrot set, uh, which is, I'm not going to explain the math here, which I mean, you can, this is a, a well known algorithm, but this is where all the work happens. So basically, what this function will do is given an x and y coordinate, it will return a value to us that tells us how to color uh, the image that we draw that represents the Mandelbrot set. So <coughs> In order to do this, uh, this is a sequential program, obviously. So I'm going to do this with two uh, independent computations here. So you can probably see where I'm going to end up with this. Uh, so we'll start and do just do half the rows uh, in one computation and half in the other, right? So we'll go ahead and run this. And we're timing this so we can see how fast this, this can get. We'll see if we can do better. This should be about. Should run for about eight seconds or so. Right, so eight seconds. And there's our image right there. So, all right. So now, if we wanted to speed this up, we could try running these two things in parallel, right? So, what I'm doing here is that the only change here, as you can see, so. So the only change here is to wrap these two computations within funks that are passed to future, which will attempt to run these funks on parallel threads, right? So we start running these two things in parallel, and then we use touch to force the values from these computations, right? So that's the only difference. So we should see about a 2x speed up here, right? So how many people think that we're going to get a 2x speed up? Ooh, me, me. <laughs> oh, sorry. Ooh. Yeah. So not good so far. Two X in sixteen seconds. Though. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, not, not quite that bad, but so yeah. So we got worse, right? So what's what's going on here, right? So we need to figure out what why this is happening. Uh, so that's where the future vis visualizer comes in. So uh, what we can do to kind of profile this thing uh, is make another quick change. So we can go from this to this. So you see the only thing that we've done is just replace time with visualized futures here, right? So what visualized futures will do is actually show us a graphical window that can explain what's going on in these things. So. Uh, I'm going to start running this now. Explain it. Uh, let's see. Yeah. So this will take a little bit longer because we've got to run the program, which is going to be about eight seconds or what, nine seconds or whatever. And then afterward, the visualizer is going to have to compile all this log data that's coming out of futures, uh, which is a time consuming process. There's a lot of data coming out of this program because obviously we're, there's a lot of slowdown happening here. Uh, so I should I should explain futures very briefly if you if you're not familiar with them. So futures are a way to quickly add support for parallel threads to Racket without rewriting the entire runtime system. Uh, and the way we do that is we we only allow futures to execute certain types of primitives uh, in parallel. So if we declare certain types of primitives safe, uh, and these are primitives that don't mutate any runtime state. Uh, they don't do anything sophisticated in terms of control flow. And then everything else we cannot run in parallel. So if a future sees any primitive that's not safe, the future blocks, and then it's, it's not going to run parallel anymore. Uh, so er the remainder of every all the work it has to do uh, has to be done within the scope of the touch point sequentially with respect to the rest of the program. So if we look at this visualizer here, it can give us a nice overview of what 
is actually going on uh, with these futures. So on the left-hand side, we see a summary of all the blocks that we encountered here. So if you remember uh, in the program, we're actually doing some complex arithmetic here, right? So these primitives are not considered safe. Uh, and we're very probably overly conservative about what's safe and what's not safe. So these are all blocking us. So divide and magnitude of complex numbers are blocking these futures. So we're getting no speed up. And so you can see there's a lot of information here. I'm not going to go into detail about what each individual color means and everything. But what you can see here is you can mouse over any individual event and see the, the migration of futures amongst different threads in the system. And you can also look here. You can mouse over this graph. Uh, so we created two futures in this program. And you can see what, what each future blocked on, right? Oh, and also, quickly here, these green bars represent actual work that's being done. So ideally, what you'd like to see is like lots of long green bars that are stacked on top of each other, right? To indicate that we're doing things in parallel. But here, we're doing almost no parallel work. So whenever we get a quick chunk of work, then we instantly end up blocking. And that's kind of denoted here by these red blocks, these red circles. So this is not good. So there are a couple of different ways that you can avoid this problem. Uh, and one kind of quick and simple way to do it is to use type bracket. So as we saw earlier, type bracket can optimize a lot of these arithmetic operations for you. Uh, and so one thing it can do uh, is actually uh, break complex <coughs> numbers into their component parts and do floating point arithmetic on these things. So that becomes safe, right? So this program is just the same program, but typed. So the only really difference, real difference here is that we've changed a couple of requires, uh, and then we've added type annotations to these functions, right? And that's it. So, and also here, once again, we're just going to run the visualizer and see what the difference is, right? OK. So already, it looks a lot better. So we have no blocking at all. So we've eliminated all that, all the complex arithmetic stuff. All that is gone. So then if we, if we just hide this view and look here, this looks good, right? So now we're getting parallel work. This is great. Uh, so just to make sure, we can time this thing again and see what the difference is. So we can change this back to the version that does the timing, but in type bracket, right? OK, so faster, right? Just a little bit faster. Right? Uh, if, you don't, if you don't believe me. Uh, Is this all due to types or due to futures? Does what? Is the speed up all due to types or futures? Uh, it's, I think it's a combination, but I think it's, it's, I would say it's probably more type bracket. Uh, but in this case, one of the nice things is that you can, you can use type bracket and the visualizer and like optimization coach to kind of get sequential and or parallel performance gains, right? So, uh, right. So if you don't, yeah, if you don't believe me, uh, I'll do, we'll change the input size to make this a little bigger. Try that. OK, so not even a second, right? So still much faster, but much bigger input size, right? Uh, so yeah, like I said, yeah, the, the main thing, the main point I'm trying to make here is that, yeah, the visualizer is great. It can really help you understand, you know, if you don't get any performance gains with futures, uh, you can instantly see what's going on under the hood, whereas before we had almost no, no means of doing that besides looking at logs. Uh, and type bracket works great with with futures as well. So.